What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money, make more money, and better yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. Today's going to be a little bit of a different video where I actually reflect and think about the top three things, the top three frugal living tips that have actually changed my life. The crazy things about these tips I'm about to give you is the simple fact that I let every single one of them go over my head at first. I just kind of brushed them off as like, yeah, whatever. Like I didn't even challenge myself to think of them in a bigger way. I didn't think there were ways to apply these to multiple aspects of finances and actually make more income for myself and save a lot more than ever before. So my goal for this video is to reach you, to reach the minds of thousands of people who want to improve their personal finances, but don't necessarily know where to start, or maybe they're closed-minded to certain ideas about personal finance. And because you're closed-minded about them, you're not applying them. Because you're not applying them, you're not seeing the results you want to see in your life. I want to change that. So all I want you to do is hit the subscribe button if you like this video and sit back and listen very closely to what I say in this video. Because what you're about to learn is three simple frugal living tips that are very valuable that almost no one follows. And these also happened to change my life. So the first frugal living tip that changed my life is the simple act of delaying gratification. And I know that's super simple and you've probably heard it a million times on other personal finance channels, but I promise you, you will never guess how this changed my life. And the reason you definitely won't guess how this changed my life is because most people think of delayed gratification in one way and one way only. So in just a minute, I'm gonna go over exactly how this changed my life and how this has been such a big impact. But first I'm gonna go over exactly what delayed gratification is and why so many people struggle to apply it correctly. To put it simply, it's waiting. Instead of getting exactly what you want right now, whatever temptations you have, whatever vices you have, it's waiting. Waiting until you're in a better spot financially to actually go out there and go get whatever it is that you want. That's a general synopsis of delayed gratification, right? But check this out. As simple as that concept is, most of us fail to do it. So let's break this down real quick. We all have things that we want, right? but we're limited to the amount of money that we make to get those things. And sometimes we make impulsive decisions and we go out there and we make really bad financial decisions. And that puts us in situations where we actually have to work a lot more, a lot longer, while carrying the frustrations of our past decisions for deciding to carry on with giving in to our temptations. All because we failed to delay gratification. So one of our biggest expenses ever is the expense of convenience. So think about all the times where you went out to eat instead of cooking at home. Think about all the times you went to the movie theater and you bought the snacks and the drinks there that are like, like quadruple what they're actually worth purely because of the fact that it was there where you were at and that was convenient for you. Instead of doing what I do and hit up the good old Walmart and keep the snacks in my pocket, you know what I'm saying? So you get the picture, right? But the biggest thing of all of these when it comes to convenience by far is food and drinks. So a lot of this mistake is simply just living in the present, not really thinking about how this could impact you in the future. At least when I'm in this situation, this is how I think, man, I need to go ahead and get me something to eat. I'm hungry, I want something that tastes good, and I don't wanna wait that long to get it. This can be the difference between you paying $16 per meal than going to the grocery store and literally getting like $5 per meal. So what I'm saying is on average, if you decide to go out to eat as opposed to cooking at home, you're essentially doubling or tripling the price that you would have paid at the grocery store. And in moderation, that's not a bad thing, but what happens is we get comfortable with that and this becomes an everyday habit. And essentially what it does is it burns a gigantic hole in our pockets and it stops us from reaching our savings goals and whatever other monetary goals that we have. That's the number one reason and that's probably the biggest brunt of where the money goes, but also you stack that on top of your vices. So for me, it's definitely Nike's like, check these out right here. This is a perfect example right here. These are fresh now, these are fresh. I ain't gonna lie to you. Check this out though. I barely wear, like, I don't even wear them like that. I can't even tell you the last time I wore those. And something else I used to buy a lot was suits. I used to go to a lot of events. I don't so much do that now, but I definitely used to a lot. I used to be all up in all kinds of different auditoriums, seminars, all this stuff, looking fresh to death in my suit. But I didn't need to buy the caliber of suits that I was buying. And to be honest, I could have went to all those events without wearing a suit. Just saying. But what I want you to see is, it's not necessarily one individual thing when it comes to not delaying your gratification that hurts you. It's 
things stacked on top of each other. So if I'm eating out every single day, or at least let's say five days a week, and then every weekend I'm going out to the mall, getting me some fresh pair of shoes, some clothes, some jackets, that's hundreds of dollars a week right there. Most of us only get paid like twice a month. So how does it then make sense to spend money literally every day? This adds up. So delaying gratification is something a lot of us can definitely get a lot better with. And it's something that I had to improve myself. But to be perfectly honest with you, in that regard, I was pretty solid with delaying gratification, believe it or not. Like once I started to understand my mistakes and how frequently I was spending money, I kind of got into a good rhythm and I didn't really have that issue anymore. Now I'm about to tell you how it changed my life. If you can apply delaying gratification with items and physical things that you can own, now I want you to really challenge yourself and think about it in terms of experiences, whether it's experiences you really want or experiences that you really want to end. My experience was an experience that I really wanted to end. It was my last job. Now I've made videos about this, about how crazy and grueling the experiences was. So I'm not gonna bore you with those details, but just put yourself in the shoes of a person who 1000% hates their job, can't stand the people that work there. You just don't know why you're there, but you, you can't find a way out. Like you don't know how you're gonna escape this impossible situation, but you have to get out of there. That was how I felt. And this was my first ever full-time job, but something told me that this was not a normal experience. Working 80 hours a week, barely getting four hours of sleep a day, overextending myself constantly, and being mistreated was just a bad combination. And it was that feeling that kind of festered over time, let's say three to six months, I was feeling that way in a row. It made me do something stupid. I walked out. Almost. And this happened like six times. I'm just saying. This happened like six times. Uh, so I, I definitely had strong feelings about my disdain for this place. And by disdain, I mean hatred. Now, obviously I didn't go through with it, but if I did, I wouldn't have been delaying my gratification now, would I? Because my gratification was ultimately, I have to get out of here and I'll be the happiest man in the world. But what I didn't realize was if I would have walked out of there, my paychecks would have stopped coming in. And I would have been reduced to whatever side hustle I was doing at the time, which was only bringing in a couple hundred dollars a month. That would mean I would still have student loan debt that I still owe, that's still sitting there looking at me like, hey, it's time to pay up. What you doing? That would mean I would need to make drastic lifestyle changes because guess what? Then since I'm not able to pay rent, I, I either need to get out of my lease or I need to find a way to get my rent. And to get out of my lease, it would have costed at least two months to get out of there. So since I didn't go through that, I, I toughed it out over there. I, I did my one year and nine months, two years, however long it was over there. I improved myself. I took advantage of whatever learning opportunities there were at the job. I learned as many processes as I could. And over that time, I built so many necessary skills that I could market myself to other places. Long story short, I was able to get a bigger, better job that paid a lot more money with a much better work-life balance. So the lesson I learned from this crazy experience was sometimes you just have to wait. And I'm not saying wait and do nothing because that's definitely not what I did. What I'm saying is you need to be patient and wait for your opportunity to strike. And in between the time that you're waiting, do things to improve yourself so you can be prepared for that time when it's time for you to get out of that job or whatever the case is. Like it doesn't just have to be specific to a job. That was just my experience. It could be a certain item that you wanna buy, a certain investment you wanna make, a certain house you wanna buy. You might want to move to a different city or a different state, but you have to think about what are the pros and what are the cons. And uh, I'm just going to share this with you before I move on to the next topic, because I've been on this topic for a while now. If I didn't delay my gratification there, that would have been at least a $20,000 mistake, but in like three different ways. So let me explain that. I would have taken a $20,000 a year pay cut. And I know because any other job offer I was getting around that time was literally $20,000 a year less. Two, I would have stopped myself from being able to save my first $20,000 in my savings account. And three, I would have costed myself a $20,000 raise. So that is how delaying gratification actually changed my life. It made me understand what I could endure and also what I could have access to in the long run. So the second frugal living tip that changed my life is a simple rule. Every dollar has a name. 
this was something I kind of just like brushed off. Like, of course, every dollar has a name to it. Like I have bills, they're on auto, but I didn't really understand the importance of what it meant and how you should actually prioritize your dollars to have certain names at certain times of the month. So for example, something I advocate for, something that I'm huge on is paying yourself first. Absolutely nobody should be paid before you, not your rent, you know what I'm saying? Not your utilities, not your car, not your gas, nothing. You need to be paid first. And all that means is whatever portion of your paycheck that you're able to save every month, that needs to go straight to you directly at the beginning of the month, no questions asked. When you do that, you'll actually blow your mind because you're able to save a lot more money a lot quicker. Whereas if you pay everything else, right? Like if you pay all your bills and then let's say you go to the mall, let's say you go out to eat a few times and then you see that you have less left over at the end of the month for yourself. So your goal might have been to save $600 every month, but you might only have $300 left over for yourself at the end of the month. So that's half of what you would normally be able to save, right? So if you pay that to yourself first and then you pay all your bills, now whatever else you want to spend money on, you can, or you can take the extra money and put it towards your saving. And now you're saving even more than you were before. And that obviously means you're going to be able to save money a lot quicker. And the part of this concept that changed my life was the fact that if every dollar has a name, that means I need to be assigning dollars to specific bills, expenses, investments, savings, whatever, before the dollars even hit my account. And once I started really taking that seriously, that was when I started to see real changes in my personal finances. That was when I was really able to help people understand what it means to save money. And the best analogy that I think I can give you right now about that is, think about your 401k. Usually if you have a full-time job, you have a 401k or something similar, like a 403b, a Roth IRA, or whatever the case is, but you have something that is tied to every single time you get paid. And every time you get paid at work, what happens automatically? Before the money even hits your account, part of that paycheck already went to your 401k. Every dollar has a name. And also I'm gonna take this a step further because this is just how I think about things. Some of your money is gonna go in the name of debt. Some of your money is gonna go in the name of saving. Some of your money is gonna go towards expenses. But some of your money is going to go towards working for you. So when you think about these four categories, either your money is leaving you, is staying but it's staying stagnant, or it's growing. And there's really no in between. Those are the only three directions your money can go into. And so one day when I, when I established that, you know, every single one of my dollars for this month and every month after this month is going to have a name, I decided, I was like, you know what, I'm going to break these down into what actually is leaving and what is staying. And then out of what is staying, how much is staying stagnant and how much is actually growing? Because that's going to show you what your wealth potential is going to be in the future. See, frugal living is about thinking about the future. It's not just thinking about right now, how you can get by right now, how you can be comfortable right now. You know what I'm saying? This is about how can I make good decisions right now to give me the best future possible? That's how I want you guys to think about frugal living. So anyway, what changed my life is I was able to change the ratios of where my money was going into. Obviously, bills are a non-factor. It has to go there. Obviously, myself, that's a non-factor. Like, I'm going to get paid first no matter what. But everything after that, though, I started changing my priorities. I started thinking about what is it that I actually want to do? Like, sure... I have nice shoes, sure I have nice clothes, you know what I'm saying, I have nice trinkets around here, got a cool TV, living room, all this stuff, but it's like, I want to start owning businesses. And this is just me, I'm not saying you got to do this, but what I'm saying is, I had to start thinking about where my money was going towards. And at the end of the day, it made me think about money a little differently, and this is the last thing I want to say about this, at the end of the day, it made me think about money differently because I noticed that a lot of the expenses that were on my list, they just kept increasing. But the pay I was making at work wasn't really moving that much. So that made me realize I need to stop thinking in terms of just dollars. I also need to think in terms of how much is my salary this year going to equal next year? If it stayed the same, it would be less. So it made me think about money differently and it made me think about how much money I want to ask for in a raise or how much money that I want to strive to get in the future so that I could keep up with my expenses and not give in to lifestyle creep. Like in my last video, you can check that out up here. And here's a pro tip about every dollar has a name. 
set everything to auto and set dates for them. And that way you can prioritize not only where each dollar goes, but when it goes there. All right, so the third frugal living tip that changed my life is something that I hold very near and dear, but it also kind of hurt me at the same time. Like it had me in my feelings because I thought I was doing something when I was saving my money. I thought I was just stacking up. When I saved my first $20,000 ever, I thought I was doing something. But then one day, you know what I'm saying? I, I get excited when I talk to like-minded people. So one day I was just telling, you know, my mentor that, yeah, I plan on saving this much by this year and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm saving $20,000 now. Like it'll be $60,000 in just a few years and blah, blah. And he was like, that's great. But uh, what what is your goal with that? And I was like, save as much as possible. He was like, okay, but how much of that are you investing? Like how much is actually working for you? And I was like, oh. He was like, you know, you can't save your way to wealth. Like, you will never be wealthy if all you ever do is just save your money. I don't care if it's half of your paychecks. It's not even, like, if it's just staying in your bank account, it's not even growing. It's literally not even keeping up with inflation. So what are you doing? You always want to have some cash reserves on you, but there's no sense in just saving and only saving and you don't invest any of it. You don't invest any of it into new skills, into things and opportunities and vehicles that can actually grow your money and fast track your way to wealth. You do realize that, right? I was like, man, man I went home. <laughs> I had to rethink my whole life after that. But it is true. That is number three. You can't save your way to wealth. And you have to really think strategically about what you want to do with your money. So there's a few examples that I'm going to give you real quick. Because I don't want to bore you with all that stuff. I have different videos on this topic specifically. But this is what I want to say. A really cool thing to put some extra money into is yourself. Like, let's say you want to learn some really cool skills. Like, there's skills out there that I'm infatuated with. Like, a skill I want to learn this year is how to code. That's something that I want to invest money in learning how to do. But let's say you don't want to do it. Let's say you just want to learn a trade. You want to learn how to weld or something. You could invest some money. Not very much money at all. But you can invest some of your money into a skill that isn't a skill that a lot of people have and you can make yourself more valuable and you can then command more money because of it and bring more money into your life because of it. That is literally the most frugal thing you can do because not only are you putting your money in a wise place, but you're literally multiplying it. You're seeing your investment back and more for the rest of your life. That's cool. You know, uh, something else I've invested my money in the past was learning how to take high quality pictures, how to make high quality videos, you know what I'm saying? How to make everything flow together. And I don't want you guys to overthink this. It doesn't have to be like a course or a class. It could literally be a book. You know, it could, it could be in the form of you spending your time and learning a new skill through somebody on say YouTube or something for free. Like you could literally watch my entire channel and you will learn a few new skills about your personal finances that both help you save more and make more. But the thing to realize is you can't just save your way to wealth because what if you had $5,000 saved, but if you would have just spent 500 of that 5,000 just one time, that could turn into $5,000 a month for the rest of your life. Like we really don't think about it this way, but that is legit how it can be. One of the coolest investments I made was coaching. Uh, and it was specific to YouTube because I knew nothing about YouTube and YouTube is a very complex uh, platform to grow on and really get your voice across. So I wanted, I thought it was a well-placed investment and it was. And um, I don't make $1,200 a month from it. But what I have done is I've more than tripled what my investment costed. So if I, so if you imagine that I spent $1,200 on my YouTube channel and my channel's made about $3,600 by now, and it wasn't really that long ago, uh, that means I made $2,400. That means I've literally doubled the amount what I paid for the coaching, but I've doubled it in terms of earnings. And so now this is just passive income. But you see what I'm saying? Like it, that means I'm literally making a few dollars every day, seven days a week, and it's completely passive. Like I post this video, it's gonna keep, it might not make but a few cents a day, but it's making me passive income. And so if I have like 200, 300 videos and they're all doing the same thing, that's passive income. That's an example of a valuable investment. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but you might not wanna do all that. You might not feel like learning a new skill every month, or you might not feel like, learning something that's really hard to do, or you might not feel like you're going to finish it. I completely get that. You might not feel like you want to be on YouTube recording yourself. You might not even feel comfortable on camera. I get that too. 
Uh, there's also other ways you can invest your money. You can literally park your money in places that make money for you. I've spoken about it a bunch of times in my investment videos. No one really watches them for some reason, but those who do watch it are very interested in growing their money. So I'm just going to say this. Check out my investment video. I'll link it up here. But just if you wanted to keep it as simple as possible, right? If I were you and I had money to invest, I and, and I didn't want to learn about the stock market and I didn't want to take massive risks, I would put money in the safest types of investments. There are ETFs, two really good ones, VOO and VTI. If you don't know what ETFs are, exchange traded funds. That's all I'm going to say about investing. Check out my investing video after this. But what, the, what those do is it, it literally grows your money. And these ETFs can go up 12% to 14% a year. In some years, it's like up 30%, and then the next year it might be like 8%. So it averages out to like the 12 to 14%. But the bottom line is, it's a better opportunity for your money to go in there. As compared to a bank account, a bank account doesn't make nothing. Like It makes like a fraction of a percentage. That's pretty insane. And here's the biggest thing I learned from not relying on just saving money to build wealth right? While you're saving your money, you can also do these things I just mentioned, but also you can create this one thing that I didn't really think about until today. It's called an asymmetric risk. It's where you risk something up front, but the risk is very small compared to what the outcome could be. So for example, so I'm just going to let it all out. Right now I'm writing a book, right? And I'm like six chapters in, it's getting really deep. Like it's really cool. I really like the way this book is turning out, right? But let's say I put this book out and nobody wanted to buy it. Out of my 8,000 and something subscribers, let's say nobody wanted to buy it. That would mean that I took the risk of wasting my time. But on the other side of that risk, the outcome could be, if let's say I sold it for $10 and I sold like four books a day. That book could pay for my rent every month. You know what I'm saying? So we have to think about the other side of the risk as well. But that's for those of you who, who want to work on something, those of you who are creative, feel like you can you can have like a product out there that other people can benefit from. Yeah, I totally get that. That's something that you can put out there that would be a risk. You know what I'm saying? And something else later this year that's coming out is my courses. That's also another asymmetric risk. If I spend all the time making the courses but no one buys them, then I wasted my time. But on the other side of that risk, people could actually buy it and for one, they can get the benefits from it and improve their lives because of it. And it could also improve my life monetarily and put me in a position to continue to produce high quality content for you guys and produce even more courses for you guys to add more value. You see what I'm saying? And none of those are extremely risky. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's why it's asymmetric risk. And I think that's super cool. But yeah, so what I'm saying is don't just rely on saving your money to build wealth. There's more ways. I just gave you three big ways right here. And I actually have videos that elaborate on exactly how to do these things. So check that out. Also, Patreon content is coming next month. So if you're interested in that, definitely go ahead and click the link below. Sign up. It's going to be some top-notch stuff. I think you guys are really going to like it. I'm going to put a lot of stuff up there that I don't put on YouTube. And you're going to get a lot of value from it for a very small cost. Shameless plug, but that is another example of investing a little bit of money to get valuable information that can actually help. But anyways, those are the top three frugal living tips that have changed my life. They've changed my entire perspective around money, how much a dollar is actually worth, where to put my money to make it grow, how to earn passive income in my sleep, and how I should operate in the future when it comes to money and how to help other people manage their money. It's super cool. So I just thought I would share those three with you. Anyways, that's a video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.